Hello, Advent is a time for preparing for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And one great way for us to do that is by scripture journaling. And so tonight, live screaming, I am going to show you how to scripture journal. And so we can get deeper into the word of God. Hey friends, welcome to our Advent Scripture Journaling. And today we are going to write 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 17 to 18. That's what we are going to write today. And as we get ready to grow deeper into the Word and write what Word, I remember many people are asking me, in this busy season, what can I do to still draw close to God? And Scripture Journaling is one way for us to do that. So today we are going to be writing that word. We are going to go deeper into it, take a moment out of our busy schedule to be able to draw close to the God. A scripture journal is a powerful way for you to not only write God words on your heart and in your journal, but it helps you to meditate upon his word, making his word meaningful to your life and not just something that you're reading and setting aside. And so now as we get ready to go deeper into the word of God, I want to share a little bit about the scripture that we are going to do today. Because ultimately scripture journal is getting deeper into the word, right? And so today we are writing in 2 Peter. Our 2 Peter is actually the second letter that Paul that Peter wrote. And as Peter wrote this letter, he is trying to encourage people to be aware of the second coming of Christ Jesus and also to be open-minded to those people who are false teachers. Peter wants the people to remember that Christ will be coming soon. And so you have to be prepared for his coming. And how does he does that? Is that not only writing and encouraging them, but he reminds them that God's grace is sufficient for them. I did the prepare themselves to go into the second coming of Christ. He can come before Christ knowing that Christ is the one who gave them the grace to do so. Amen? And so the very foundation of everything that God gave us is found in the grace of Christ Jesus. Not in something that we do, not in something that we hope in our heart to. So in this letter, Peter reminded people, not only is Christ coming back again, but he gives you everything you need to prepare for that coming. One of the ways that Peter wants the church to be prepared is by living godly. A godliness is not what we think about it. It's really about focusing on how we speak, how we think, and how we interact with people. When we interact with people with love, care, and understanding, that's a form of godliness. Godliness is not just being perfect. It's about living in a way that is reflecting of Christ Jesus. As Peter said, when you get ready for Christ's second return, if you are living this way in harmony and in peace for one another, then your life could be more prepared. You will be more ready when Christ comes up. And so that's what we are going to be journaling tonight. As we journal, I want you to focus and get into wisdom and discernment from God so that he can lead you into the understanding that he wants for your life. Each of us have individual life that God wants to make an impact on. How he choose to transform your life will be different how we choose to transform mine. The underlining key for both of us is that we must be willing to listen to the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the changes that God wants us to make. As we write and meditate upon the Word of God, we can't just leave it like that. We also have to apply to our life and be willing to make a change into our life. It's very difficult during this time for us to set our time to meditate upon God's Word. But whenever we discipline our mind to do such thing, we can do that. And that's what Scripture Journal allows us to do. Go deeper into the Word, applying it to our life, and hoping in our hearts and our minds to hear what God is saying to us. Amen? And so as we go into this practice, let us go to the Lord first and ask Him to give us wisdom and discernment as we participate in the Scripture Journaling process. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to do this tonight. Thank you for those who took time out of their busy schedule to watch and listen to this live streaming. Let everyone who is going to be participating to this receive a blessing on their life. May you open our hearts and give us wisdom and discernment as we read and write the scripture. 
May your wisdom and understanding go into us. And may we apply what you have given us to our life and be willing to take the change that you want us to take. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. To start off, we are now going to read a scripture. And as I said, the scripture is coming from 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 17 to 18. So let us read the scripture out loud. And here is what the word of God says. It says, you already know these things, dear friend. So be on your guard. Then you will not be carried away by the error of these wicked people and lose your secure footing. Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All glory to him, both now and forever. Amen. One more time. Let us read the scripture. One more time. But this time, we're reading it slowly and quietly. Read with me. All right. And so now we have read the scripture out loud and we read it silently so that we can get a deep understanding of what we are reading. But now let's take it a little further. Now we are going to write the scripture. I'll give you a few moments to write the scripture. But if you want, you can finish it and come back, pause this video and write it. All right? As I write this scripture, I get my revelation. And you too. It's quite impossible for us to read and write the scripture without God revealing something to her. And so I'm going to share with you what God revealed to me. And you can also write what God revealed to you. What God revealed to me may be for me only, but it also may be for you. And so as I write this, what as I read and write the scripture, you know, as I looked at the scripture, some of the things that come to my mind is that first, you know, Peter said, you already know these things, dear friend. And Peter said, as people of God, it's not the first time you are hearing that Christ will be returning. <laughs> you already know these things. Not everybody acts on what they know. Sometimes we know things, but we do the opposite of we are human beings. We're prone to mistake. And so that's what's happening here. The people in Peter's time, they know Christ is returning, but their life is like he will never come back. Their life is like he's never going to come back and look at the things they do. Their life is like he is not watching them right there while they're right there. Hmm. So Peter said, you already know these things. Many times we know what's the right thing to do, but we don't do it. That's just because we are human. But here is a powerful thing about this scripture. Even when we don't do what we are supposed to do, if we have a Christ into our life, it's great to cover us from our mistake. And eventually, it's Holy Spirit is going to guide us into that transformation so we stop making that mistake. That's the whole process of sanctification. We are not perfect humans, but we serve a perfect God. And it's Holy Spirit is there to guide us into that perfection. And sometimes even though we already know these things, we may not apply to a life, and we may not do it. And so as I read the scripture and write the scripture, I realize that these people already know, they're fully aware of the prophecy of Jesus, not just because of Peter, but they have been hearing it. You know, they have heard this message over and over and over again. And even though we know, how do we live for it? I mean, every single day I wake up, I go about living my life, and I think about what to do and what not to do. But I don't really consider thinking about the prophecy that Jesus will return. How different would my life be if every day when I wake up, I say, this is the day he's coming. What if I wake up tomorrow morning 
and Christ's return. Am I ready for that? Hmm. Peter also said, do not be carried away the error of these wicked people. Sometimes we go around and we do things that we believe wrong. That's natural. But if you choose to follow Jesus, you have to follow Jesus and not the world. The world can lead you into the wrong direction. But when you're following Jesus, you can also be fully prepared on his return. I do notice that sometimes, you know, people twist God's words around. They will say this and that and that and that. And some people even say, oh, I know when Christ is returning. He's going to return at this here. Good for you. But my Bible told me that no one knows. Not even Jesus himself knows when he's coming back. And so I have to be fully prepared. This I've been seizing my mind in all the preparation of when God's coming. And I also have to be watchful about the things that people do around me and not do for me. You know, not because I want to be different, but because I'm a child of God and I want to live as his child. If I get caught up in doing everything everyone do, then I will never be ready for Jesus. I will always need this day, another day, give me one more day to get ready for him. Hmm. But here's the powerful thing. In verse 18, it said, Rather, you must grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All glory to him, both now and forever. Amen. Wow. This is how we get ready for Christ's return. By growing in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus. We grow in grace by not taking for granted what Christ did on the cross for us. We may not feel like we need to accept what he did. We may feel like, oh, I never sent Jesus up there to do anything for me. But he did it anyway. And you need it more than you even know. Because this world is not going to be around forever. And Jesus knows that. And so we grow in his grace by growing acceptance of what Christ did for us. For appreciation for the love that he showed us, the teaching that he gave us, obedience to his father that he lived for us. Today. That's how we grow in the grace of Jesus. And Peter also said to grow in the knowledge of Jesus. This is so needed today. How do you grow in the knowledge of Jesus? You can't grow in the knowledge of Jesus by just reading the Bible. You can't. Like we're doing today's scripture journaling, you have to meditate on the word of God, study the word of God, read it and apply it to your life. You got to go in there and get everything you need, feeding on there. You can't do that by just reading. Reading and not be so much different than reading the word of God. And not only are you read it, you have to have the Holy Spirit write it on your heart and give you a desire to change. And the last part said, all glory to him, both now and forever. And see what that tells me? Is that Christ's grace and knowledge is forever. This world will disappear, but God's words remain. And so therefore, I always have an opportunity to get more from him. And so as we write the scripture tonight, I pray that God will open your heart for you to seek more grace and knowledge of Jesus. In your own personal space, in your own personal time, appreciate what Christ does for you. And open your heart to get to learn more about who he is and how you can grow close to him. And as we finish all of this, ending the day with this word, this wonderful, wonderful way that we're doing that. And so what I'm going to ask you now is to let's apply everything we just heard. Let's apply everything we just read and write. By doing a journaling application. And so to do that, I want you to grab your journal. And we are going to do something powerful. What I put here is what you're going to do. You're going to write a prayer to Christ. asking him to show you how to go closer to him. Let me say that one more time. Write a prayer to Christ. asking him to show you how to go closer to him. Writing your prayer out is a powerful to get God speak to your heart. 
You can even make it more interesting. Dear Jesus, hmm. I have been going through such and such. But today, after reading 2 Peter chapter 2, I want to go close to you. Show me how to do so. And take the time today to join the love to your pride and allow God to speak your heart and your mind. I pray that this scripture journaling and Advent season will touch you in a powerful way. I will continue this journaling of Advent season until the end of the month. And so you can always come back again. I'm going to post this video so you can come back again. Even though we are live streaming now, I'm going to post this video on our YouTube channel so you can come back and review this video. Whatever you do, practice writing God's words, writing your prayer, so God can make a great impact on your life. Let us pray. Father, I just want to thank you. I thank you for the opportunity for us to learn about you and your word. I ask in the name of Jesus that every person who is doing this journaling activity will go close to you and your son Jesus. Open up our mind and all the understanding of who you are and how we can abide in your son Jesus Christ. So that we can grow the fruit of righteousness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And may he fully empower you to draw close to him. And may his peace that surpass all understanding be with you now and forever. Have a wonderful evening. God bless you. And I'll see you next Sunday for Scripture Journey.